we have the wigs. Just going back to that map that I showed earlier. Now, they are very, very close to the Ahina Den, about 300 meters in the drainage below. So we thought it's a good opportunity to just come and say hi. Amazing how much more darker feathers Twiglet has developed. And a couple of days ago, it was almost still entirely grey whitish. Those eyes. <laughs> it's also a first for me in terms of, and I've seen this species a number of times in my life, but and chicks, but. To have this opportunity to see this chick develop over time, something I'm really looking forward to. And every time I'm off air, I also take the opportunity to take a few photos as well. So I'm on a, a little bit of a mission at the moment to try and photograph all the birds on my list. I'm starting out a new list and it's my photographic list of birds, birds that I've photographed. And I'm only on something like a hundred at the moment. It's a very di different thing to see a bird to photograph it. Good morning Lance, and Lance just mentioned that how amazing it is how quickly babies grow in the wild. It is rather fascinating, isn't it? And there's some purpose to that as well. One has to grow very quickly here to survive in most cases. Um, unless you're an elephant, who's the largest land mammal, where you can grow slowly because you have the protection of a whole herd of four or five ton animals but other than that especially if you're a smaller creature you need to get going there's no time to waste so therefore they have evolved this very quick sort of childhood if i can put it that way and this is across a number of species from birds to reptiles to mammals you know this is a recurring tactic, if I can put it that way. Oh, second chance. So, um, <clears throat> just going back to a few days ago when there was a Wahlberg's eagle flying around, uh, she used deception at the time. So she moved away from the nests to attract the drungos and the Wahlberg eagle, and she did sort of hiss at them. Um, I think that would be arguably. The best defense is to use stealth, firstly, and, and we've seen her cover the chick at times as well, which is mainly for temperature control, but she is a lot more cryptically colored and her camouflage is much better than the chick at the moment. 
So she will cover it. That could be one way. So using stealth and then also deception. Uh, I think smaller things you might try and fend off if it's a small snake or, you know, she might be able to. But I think very important as well is the way she chooses her nest. I think that is probably one of the most important things. And I think this is a very good nest. Um, it might appear exposed from where we are. But when we're very much lower than them in the drainage, so from above, uh, they are quite hidden. There is a small a tree that covers them. You can just see the base of it there. And um, so they are relatively well hidden. The tree is a, a small jacket plum, is the tree that she's under. I can't really show you now how to identify that tree, but if I get another jacket plum later on, I'm going to show you. It's got a very typical characteristic leaf. Maybe we can see a bit of it there while we... Oh, there we go. Yo, Beaker, you are on the ball. So it's got a typical round leaf. And the veination on the leaf has got this, what we refer to as a herringbone pattern. It's like, you know like the bones of a fish after you've stripped off all the juicy meat and then coupled with this very sort of pale ashy type of box and that's called the jacket plum that's right above her and that gives a fair coverage from above Something's just off. <laughs> it's like, you know, babies are cute, but they they don't really resemble the adult immediately. That takes time. There's very few birds when they are born that are that looks a lot like the adults. I think it's very cute. I think it's a very cute little bird. Although, you know, at that stage now, where <laughs> there's a lot of proportions that are sort of out of sync, and you know, as they start losing the chick feathers and new ones come out, it's, it's going to look a bit scruffy at times. That's normal though, it's, it will be normal. <laughs> Good morning leopard lover, um, yeah, that's going to be a very difficult one to answer. I don't really know. And even with the adults, there is very little dimorphism between the species. Um, so it's going to be quite tricky. I will have to get a slightly more expert view on that. Um, and maybe next time I'm down here, I can. I can hopefully answer that. I will need to. I will need to dig into that one a bit and maybe get in the help of. I do have a few friends that are ornithologists. I can maybe find out for you. To be honest with you, I don't know how it's going to be. Um, once it's f f fledged, yes, then it'll have the adult appearance. I think it's something like 40 days or something like that. But um, but whether you'll be able to tell the the sex right away, I don't know. A good person to to ask is JP. I know JP is one of the most accomplished birders that I've met in my career. I know he's always 
learning more and more things about birds. Might be a very good idea to get JP's view on that. We'll see if we can get that somehow for you. But on my side, I will also try and consult some of my 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 colleagues and friends and acquaintances who are very much on a much higher level in terms of birding. <clears throat> And last time around I was here there was a lot more birds but uh, we're probably going to be moving on so let's see if we can't find maybe something else and we'll revisit the two of the game them very soon again and then in the meantime let's head over to JP who's at the dam